Would you like to get updated with the latest episode of Anime Kohai Tensura Spoiler Series? It's episode number 300, volume 13, chapter 4, part 4, entitled, Adelman and his team get defeated by the Imperial Guardians. Support the channel and you will have access to three episodes per week. Check out her Patreon page if you get a chance. The marching route of the Imperial Army passed between the Canaan Mountains and the Great Jura Forest. There was no road in the eastern part of the Great Jura Forest, rendering that route far too slow. If they advanced to the main entrance of the Dwarven Kingdom and then headed south along the Great Amald River, they would reach this in town. That was where the real battle would begin, were it not for one problem. Wait a minute, Yuki Dono, if we don't cross the forest, we will run the risk of provoking Dwargon. Calgurio interjected, bringing up a fair point. I heard that King Gazel and Demon Lord Rimuru are on good terms, and the two countries are allies. If we followed your plan, then don't you think we would be recklessly wedging ourselves in between two fronts? Instead of advancing along the Great Amald River, he proposed they should march through the forest, out of the desire to avoid confrontation with the Dwarven Kingdom. Once the battle began, the Dwarven troops would be deployed as reinforcements. In order to prepare for that eventuality, he deemed it unacceptable to leave the supply lines at risk of getting cut off. The troops would be trapped between the mountains and the river. If they were forced into a two-front war, they would lose their advantage in numbers. Even with the aid of airships, they wouldn't be able to make use of them to resupply if they couldn't set up a camp. Calgurio couldn't let Yuki's proposal go unchallenged. But Yuki grinned as if he had expected this. Don't worry, Calgurio Dono. We aren't aiming for the in-town, but the Dwarven Kingdom. If we cannot negotiate with King Gazel, then we can't call his nation a friendly one, wouldn't you agree? Hostile kingdoms have no need to exist, isn't that right? What? Calgurio was at a loss for words after hearing Yuki's speech. Following that, the conference hall exploded into chaos. Are you proposing we attack the armed nation of Dwargan? While yes, we could win, we cannot fathom the scale of destruction involved. If we do that, we won't have enough remaining strength to attack the West. As we all know, that nation is protected by a natural fortress. A multitude of ideas were thrown around the hall, and the resulting cacophony only widened the grin on Yuki's face. You're right. That nation is like a fortress. Because it specializes in defense, it is said to be impregnable. But you see, we have tanks, don't we? Dwargan's specialized magic defense is what earned them their prominence. If we were to get rid of that, we could cut through them like a hot knife through butter. Hmm. Calgurio thought he had a point. Supposing they attacked the Dwarven Kingdom, the target would be Eastern or Central. If they wanted to catch their enemy off guard, they shouldn't aim for Eastern, which was adjacent to the Empire, but rather attack the front line, Central, through the Great Jura Forest. If they feigned an attack on Demon Lord Rimuru's in town, only to swing around and lay siege to Central with the tank unit, that would allow them the opportunity to eliminate the in town while preventing reinforcements from the Dwarven Kingdom. I see, that plan may be more interesting than I thought. Right? If the Dwarven Kingdom were met with a crisis, then Demon Lord Ramuru would have no choice but to act. If we take the initiative and prepare the battlefield in a way that allows us to intercept them, then... It means our army will be guaranteed the upper hand. That's a good plan, Calgurio nodded. I presume that only a vanguard force is stationed in the in-town, Yuki said. But either way, they will have the edge as long as we fight in Jura's forests, which will come at a great cost to our side. However, if we launch a full assault on the Dwarven Kingdom first, its natural fortress will provide us with defense, instead. His words were laced with deception. If it came down to firing their magic guns, the initial salvo would destroy Central. Even if the enemies escaped into an underground cave system such as a labyrinth, the urban areas near the entrance would be turned to rubble. Although, in due time, the Empire would take the city and rebuild it, the time frame would extend beyond the length of the war. This meant that it couldn't be used to their advantage as Yuki had described. Calgurio realized this, but he decided to play along with Yuki's proposition. While I don't think that is going to work out smoothly, there's something I need to ask. At the very least, it is more exhilarating to set a trap and wait for the mouse, killing it in one go, than to chase it in the dense forest. After that, we could take aim at the capital of Tempest with impunity. Before that, I still have something to say about my plan. As everyone knows, my mixed core is better at individual combat than group battles, and I think that's why we are better suited to carry out the investigation of the labyrinth. As I mentioned earlier, there is a rumor that Veldora is guarding the 100th floor. In order to confirm this, too, we require an investigation, correct? 
And there we go, Calgario smiled internally. He didn't expect Yuki to abandon his goal, so he could see this coming a mile away. That's unnecessary. If you ignore the in town and head for the capital of that monster country, you will be caught in the crossfire from both sides. It would be better, then, to send my army westward and head towards the dungeon on an unpaved road. In the first place, I'd have to see it with my own eyes to believe that a city can disappear. Tactically speaking, it would be correct to assume that the main force of Demon Lord Rimuru is on the ready. As Calgario protested, he caught a fleeting look of frustration on Yuki's face. You're still green behind the ears. Don't flatter yourself by thinking everything will go your way, kid. Calgario was filled with delight. And then... Finally, you're acting like a decent military council. The marshal said. Well then, you seem confident, Calgurio, so I'm going to leave the matter concerning Demon Lord Ramuri to you. On her command, the invasion of the Great Jura Forest by the Armored Corps became final. The marshal continued speaking. This alone is not enough. If we are to attack Dwargan, we'd better put pressure on them from Eastern. I'll leave that up to the Mixed Corps. Together with the task of defending our capital, you, the commander of the Corps, will be responsible for its formation. Understood. Yuki was about to argue but caught himself. Judging from the tone of the marshal, her decision was non-negotiable. Instead, the remaining corps commander, Gladium, spoke up. Please wait! Does this mean my Magic Beast Corps will not participate in this war? I promise that my corps will be useful, so please consider! He called out to the other side of the bamboo blind with a ghastly look on his face. If he and his corps were ordered to stay, the Magic Beast Corps, smallest of the three, would be given no chance to show off. The other corps commanders were about to rob him of an important task, right under his nose, making him miss his chance at glory during the war. I can never accept that, Gladium was desperate. Don't panic, foolish one. I have already planned for your time in the limelight. Really? So, what is my role going to be? You are to lead the entire Magic Beast Corps to the north. When Gladium finally registered the answer from the marshal, he was astonished by the absurdity of it. Demon Lord Rimuru and King Gazel would concentrate on defending their nations. They then had the opportunity to blindside the Western nations, who were fixated elsewhere, by launching a simultaneous invasion. And before the Western States Council could react, they'd need to construct a beachhead. To the north? Are you saying we crossed the Kanat Mountains? Gladium was shaken as he pieced together what was implied in her statement. He understood the reason. Not just two fronts, it would be a simultaneous three-front strategy. Nevertheless, the Empire had enough military power to pull it off. However, the tactical, not strategic, aspect of this operation posed numerous challenges. The idea of trekking through the Canaan Mountains with tens of thousands of soldiers bordered on insanity. Gladium was hesitant to point this out, but then he heard the marshal laugh. That's right, Gladium. Attack the royal capital of Ingratia by sea. The Kingdom of Farminas, which is in the process of reconstruction, can be destroyed at any time once we take Dwargan. What? The sea? But I don't think our nation has naval battleships capable of large-scale transportation. We have them, right, Calgurio? Having been called upon by name, Calgurio knew it was futile to lie. Hearing the marshal call him without an honorific, he got a bad feeling in his gut, enough to dissuade him from commenting on it. The marshal was that intimidating. As the marshal said, the latest weapon developed by my army is called an airship. With the support of the Air Assault Division, which uses this state-of-the-art weapon, transporting the Magic Beast Corps is feasible. Calgurio's remark caused a ruckus in the conference hall. That meant there was a way to invade the Western nations without going through the Great Jura Forest. Of course, they were excited. However, Calgurio continued, turning to Gladium. As they are a necessary trump card to fight the Storm Dragon, we can only provide assistance in the form of transportation. Would that be all right? Calgurio would keep 100 of the airships and load up as much firepower as they could carry. The remaining 300 airships were already sufficient to transport well over 100,000 troops, each of them sporting a maximum capacity of 400 people. Excluding the staff operating the ship, they could still carry 350 troops. The Magic Beast Corps numbered 30,000 warriors and 30,000 beast knights adding up to 60,000 plus the support force to help them fight at their full potential, and not to forget, their supplies. A total of 300 airships would be enough to transport everything. The airships themselves could not be expected to take part in the battle, but if it were just about transporting the Magic Beast Corps, they could handle it with ease. Calgurio promptly drew a line that was absolutely non-negotiable and thrust it at Gladium. 
Gladium, well aware of this, groaned to himself. It was an honor for the soldiers to fight against the demon lord Rimuru and Veldora the storm dragon. It would be a shame to miss out on the opportunity, but the strategy that the marshal proposed was equally appealing. It was an unprecedented blitzkrieg operation that would fundamentally challenge the understanding of war. The sluggish western nations would crumble before Gladium's magic beast core. This strategy made sense, all but guaranteeing their success. More importantly, there were champions called the Holy Knight Order in the West. They were a group that specialized in individual combat and were rumored to be the strongest even in group battles. It was said that the Imperial Guards, their partners, were also outstanding. Not to mention the presence of Hanata Sakaguchi in the Holy Empire of Ruberius. She was virtually the strongest knight and served as the head of the Imperial Guards as well as the commander of the Holy Knight Order. Her reputation was heralded across the lands, reaching even the Empire. However, there was a rumor abound that she had recently tied with Demon Lord Rimuru. If that were the case, the so-called strongest knight would be no match for Gladium, now that her spirit was lost. He would tear apart Hanada's champions and trample the holy capital. Gladium felt the beast blood flowing through his veins start to simmer. That's great! Beast King Gladium roared. If you could transport us to the battlefield in one piece, let's go with that plan! His agreement further jacked up the excitement in the Grand Conference Hall. We will win! We will definitely win! Victory belongs to us, the Empire! Long live the Emperor! And so on, and so forth, many of them were already beginning to revel in the idea of victory. As if responding to their fervor, Calgurio made Gladium a promise. Going by sea, you can give the dragons a wide berth, rest easy and leave it to me. This was one of the plans that Calgurio had in mind from the beginning. Considering the flight range of dragons, the oversea route was well outside the purview of the dragon roost. Plus, since travel by air also let them wholly avoid the sea monsters, which were more than a little pesky, he figured that this was one of the safest routes to reach the west. It would be, however, impossible to coordinate with the tank units, thus he thought it was too early to propose the plan. That was why the preliminary investigation was perfect. So, despite the odd circumstances leading to the adoption of his plan, Calgurio was pleased with the way things had turned out. Interesting. We will transport the Magic Beast Corps with the airships and then focus on support and supplies afterwards. That's how I'll let it all play out, and then, I could reap all of the glory. If a large force emerges in the north, it will take the allied forces of the west by surprise. When that happens, they'll deteriorate into a pathetic rabble. Unable to muster any reinforcements for Demon Lord Rimuru, they will descend into utter chaos. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to the new members of Anime Kohai Sponsors. Ono Mormon, Kingsley Mylas, Michael Rogers, Jordan, Kamal Ebanks, Chris Duncan Jr., Isaac, Shadow Wolf 660, Koala King 93, Rand Hall Hernandez. Thank you so much for helping out. I'll see you guys in the next video.